Regardless who's in the field, the Phoenix Open, Lena, will always look like this, weather permitting, of course. Uh, it is part party, part fashion show, part golf tournament. But did you know that was always the vision for this tournament, even back when the city of Phoenix looked like the Old West? Riding around Phoenix Country Club, Tim Sexton tells pretty cool stories. My family lived down here on the third hole. About his old backyard. Started playing golf when I was nine years old. I've been playing golf out here for 73 years, and I've been very lucky and fortunate. Out here is a 100-year-old golf course. Now, Tim isn't that old, but his family ties to the tournament are Tim's uncle. It's called the father of the Phoenix Open. Back then, it didn't look like this. The tournament started in 1932, was a financial flop with no support. Canceled for a few years until an original Thunderbird, Bob Goldwater, saved it. He came in front of the Chamber of Commerce one day, just himself, and convinced the Chamber of Commerce they should have the golf tournament. Reborn in 1939, the prize money, less than $700. It wasn't a tremendous success, but it wasn't losing any money. The foreshadowing came in 1943. On pause due to wartime travel restrictions, Goldwater used the year off to put his vision of turning the Phoenix Open into the premier star-studded golf event in motion. Turns out he just needed to invite his friends. He flew around to different cities and met with some of the top pros in the country convinced him in 1944 to come to play in the tournament. Then he took his plane and flew to Hollywood and met with a lot of the celebrities, uh, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, Phil Harris, uh, Jer Jerry Lewis, Dean Martin, all these, and convinced them to come over in 1944 and play in the Pro-Am. And from that day forward, the tournaments just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. For a whopping $2, you could come to Central Phoenix and rub shoulders with the elites and watch some of the game's greats. Ben Hogan, Jack Nick and four-time winner Arnold Palmer. He'd never forget a, a name. I'd come out here and, and from a distance he'd say, hi, Tim. The tournament stayed at Phoenix CC with occasional stops at Arizona Country Club till 1986. That's when they ran out of room to put people. There was no parking, so we had to move out to Scottsdale. And I'll never forget the meeting when we decided to go out there. We just said nobody would show up. Well, <laughs> Oh, they showed up at TPC Scottsdale and have been showing up for 37 consecutive years. The crowds got bigger and bigger. So did the sponsors. So did the tents. When it was here, uh, the Bird's Nest, which is a place where you go and have a few drinks and they have music, it was on one tennis court. Out there now, you can get about 12,000 or more than that into it, and they're putting more tents in. The famous 16th hole was flat until college kids got the party going in the late 90s. A bunch of ASU kids would come watch, and they have six packs of beer and be out there. So uh, we built a little bleacher the next year, and the thing just got bigger and bigger every year. The most famous shot? Who else? Tiger Woods is ace in 97. Now hitting a hole in one on 16 is so famous, you get your name on a statue and a beer bath. If they hit a bad shot, they boo you. Another Sun Devil, Phil Mickelson, helped put this tournament on the map. One of four players to win it four times, shooting a course record 60 twice. Low scores, big party. Golf's biggest party. The celebs are always out. I got a day job, so I don't have to rely on, on uh, making money playing golf, so I'm good. It's a bucket list destination. $20 million up for grabs, and Saturday at the Phoenix Open to this day is a top 10 highest single day attended sporting event in the world. I do go out there every year just to make sure I can go to the 16th hole. On a golf course with Tim Saxon, you'll hear plenty of cool stories. What my uncle did was just incredible. If he was still here with us, he'd just be so proud of what has occurred. And, and it's just, he, I'm lucky. About his old backyard. <laughs> Not a bad place to grow up, right? Bob Goldwater didn't live to see the, what the Phoenix Open was today, but his influence really touched nearly every aspect of growth here in the city. His brother is former Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater. Their family founded the old Goldwater's Department Store. And speaking of growing, the money, Lena, that this tournament raises for Arizona charities is truly unreal. We see it every year since 2010 when WM became the title sponsor. They have raised more than $124 million. Unreal.